Hi, today we're going to look at a few problems to do with moments. Okay, so let's have a look at a simple one to start with. This is about as simple as uh, moments problems get. You've got a force being applied a certain distance from a pivot and you're given the perpendicular distance uh, from the pivot to the force uh, and you're given the force and the distance and the force, they're perpendicular to each other. So this angle here is 90 degrees. So let's have a look at solving the problem. So if we're asked to work out what the moment is, you know that a moment is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance. So that's going to be 30 times 5, which is... 30 times 5, 150 Newton metres. There's no slash here because it's Newtons times metres, not Newtons divided by metres. So it's not Newtons per metre, it's Newton metres. OK, let's have a look at another problem. This is a very common problem that you see uh, and this uh, involves using something called the principle of moments. So here you'd be told that uh, this system here is balanced and that means that the moment due to this force will be equal to the moment due to that force and you can use this fact to work out the missing distance. There's no complications here really, there's one anticlockwise moment from the 40 Newton force and one clockwise moment from the 30 newton force. So it's not particularly complicated. You work out each of the moments, they'll be equal to each other. So let's work out the anticlockwise moment first. So we know that the clockwise moment is going to be equal to the anticlockwise moment. and that, that anticlockwise moment is going to be equal to the 40 newton force times its distance from the pivot so that will be 40 newton meters so our clockwise moment must also be equal to 40 newton meters and it will be equal to the 30 newtons times that distance that we don't know Let's call that distance x rather than a question mark. OK, so now we can work out what x is. So x is going to be equal to 40 newton metres divided by the force of 30 newtons. So that's going to give us 1.3 metres. And there we are, problem solved. If you get more complicated problems than this, um, so you might, for example, have another force, say here, uh, and another distance. If you've got that case, then what you would do is work out the moment for that force, work out the moment separately for that force, and then you would add those two together to get the total anticlockwise moment. Likewise, if there's more than one force here, you work out the moments individually and then add them up to find out what the total force is in either the clockwise or the anticlockwise direction. Here's another problem you might see. This is getting towards the more A-level problems rather than GCSE. Um, the difficulty here is that our angle here means that this distance and this force are not at right angles to each other here. The only part of this force that contributes to the moment will be the one that's perpendicular. So the component of the 50 Newton force that's acting at 90 degrees here to the distance. So let's see how to solve that. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Okay, so we want to know, so that's 90 degrees there, um, what this force here is. Now, We've not been given uh, an angle here, and we should have been. So let's say this angle here is 
let's say it's 40 degrees. Okay, so F is going to be equal to, um, so this angle here will be 90 minus 40, um, so that's going to be 50 degrees. So F is going to be 50 cos 50. So that's going to be 32 newtons. Everything in the question is given to one or two significant figures. As you never give anything to one significant figure, we'll give our answers here to two significant figures. So next thing to do is to work out the moment of that force. So the moment is going to be your force times your perpendicular distance. So that'll be 32 times 5. So that's going to be 100 and 60 newton meters. This final problem I'm going to show you is about as hard as it gets uh, at A level applying the principle of moments. So this problem only involves applying the principle of moments. You're told that the wooden pole is held upright so it's um, not got an overall moment, it's not turning. So the total clockwise moments are going to be equal to the total anti-clockwise moments but there's a complication in that T here is at an angle, so it's not perpendicular, which will make it a GCSE level problem. So this is what differentiates A level from GCSE. So let's make this a little bit smaller so we've got some room to work. There we go. Right, let's have a go at solving it. So what we need to do is we need to work out the component of T along here, so that the angle between the distances from the pivot, the pivot being the bottom down here, we need um, the component of T that's perpendicular to those distances, because uh, that's the only part that will contribute to the, which way is it, the anti-clockwise moment. So, um, this component here, let's call it F, F is going to be equal to uh, T cos 35 because as the opposite angles, that angle there is going to be 35 degrees as well. So your anti-clockwise moment is only down to that force. So that's going to be equal to 3.5 times t cos 35. We know that that's also equal to the clockwise moment, which is 600 times the full length of the pole, which is 5.5, which is 3,300 newton metres. So now we can put those two equal to each other using the principle of moments. So we've now got 3.5 times t cos 35 is equal to 3,300. So we can solve it from there. So 3.5 lots of cos 35 will be 2.87 um, times t which is going to be equal to 3,300. So T is going to be equal to 3,300 divided by 2.87. So that will be 1,100 newtons. And that's given to two significant figures because the numbers in the question are either one or two significant figures. We never give things to one significant figure, so therefore we'll give our answer to two significant figures to match the rest of the question.